superstars. Thank you for joining me for Dressage Explained. Remember, this is as live session as I could possibly do so that you can get some really candid, close to real life answers as I can give you. Hopefully one day I can have some people sitting here and I can actually answer those questions live. But at the moment, this is me answering the questions that you leave in the comments below, the comments underneath my videos. I go through each and every single one. I endeavor to answer every single question you leave because I'm so grateful that you guys do it. And once a week now, I'm gonna answer your questions in a more live format, in a conversational manner, okay? This is something I really think is good because this is what taught me. This is what I did, you know, sitting in cars with Olympians, sitting in um, arenas with Olympians and just going, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? I'm hoping that I can give that, that availability to you without needing to spend 24 hours with me a day and just ask me lots of questions. So hopefully you're getting loads out of it. The views are showing that you are. Thank you so much. And again, guys, the more you guys subscribe, the more I can keep doing this sort of stuff. So please help me and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thanks guys, enjoy it, bye. Okay, so this one is from Kitty Soz. And again, this is from the training scale part two. So again, I'll put it up here so that you can see it and you can click onto it if you wanna see it. She has quite a lot of questions there. And Kitty, I can only answer one today. But one of them is really, really important. And what she's asking is how do you use the training scale to get a horse to actually take contact who's avoiding it? So there's one thing about a horse that's just completely got no idea and they're just not there yet. But there's another when you have a horse that somewhat appears to be in a frame, but he's not taking the contact forward, okay? And the answer is simple. The answer is increase his suppleness to give him no choice but to take the contact forward. You might say to me, great, but how? So this is the how. So remember, circles are supple, suppling exercises. So don't do them over and over and over, but sometimes just simply turning a circle will bring the horse's hind leg closer to its front leg and able for him to take the connection. If that doesn't work, you can then add some more. So you can add a little bit of leg yield on the circle because then what you've got is a natural bend of the circle plus you're putting the quarters out. Now, if you've got a baby baby that doesn't even understand what leg yield is yet, this is where that understanding of your banana, and again, guys, I'll put it just here, banana, understanding your banana, understanding what that is, that is and where to sit on your horse, that's where you can do a mini baby leg yield to get the horse to go sideways a little bit, actually bring his hind leg underneath his tummy, pushing him more into the contact without even knowing the A, just by using your body weight. So if you sit a little bit to the inside, put both of your hands a little bit toward the outside to where you want him to be and forward, that pushes him that way. And when you're going around a circle, he'll then sort of go sideways around the circle like this, pushing his quarters out. When you do that, that pushes him into the contact. The moment you feel that he gives you a little bit of a positive tug in the rein, you go forward, put both hands forward and follow him forward. The second you feel he ducks behind again, you make him sideways again, whether that's a leg yield on a schooled horse or sitting your weight to the inside and pushing his, his weight over to get him to really bend, cross his hind legs. And if you watch the Thoroughbred episode on Thursday, he is this horse and I actually get him to do this. Okay, and I'll show you how it works. But it's about that little bit of win. Push his quarters over so he has no choice but to do it on a circle. And on the circle is so important because he's not able to brace against you as easily. The moving Because the shoulders are on that circle line, it gives him the impression to keep going. And it's easy for you as well because it's a constant line. It never ends. You're never going to hit a wall. You're never going to run out of room. And every time he takes a little bit of connection, you give him the reins again and let him take it forward, let him enjoy it. The minute he sucks back, move your body weight, send him sideways again on that circle. And that will slowly but surely allow him to take that connection a little bit more, okay? 
When you're starting to get really confident with him and he's less of a baby, you can also use the forward button to help you. So for example, you have much more influence in the canter because of just the way the canter is, that there's not so many feet on the ground all of the time. So you might be in a rising trot, you feel him duck behind the contact. You can do a small leg yield on a circle while asking for a bigger step, which then makes him take a bigger step and stepping underneath him, which pushes his nose forward. If he doesn't listen enough in that respect, you can then continue that into a canter aid and in the canter do the same exercise because in that canter aid, you have much more influence again to push him sideways so he has to take the contact forward. The moment you feel a correct connection in that forward, go back to trot, asking for big steps again. The second he sucks back again, move his hindquarters. If that doesn't work, pop to canner in the leg yield. So it's about constantly moving him in a sideways way to give him no choice but step underneath him. And when you have the control to also use forward to help you with that. Okay, never be afraid to get a little tiny win and then build on that win and then build on that win and then build on that win. That's how you get success with a horse that doesn't take contact. And it can take a year, a year plus to make that happen. But once you've got them in that connection, once they will take the contact, then generally they turn into being really, really good horses. I hope that answered your question. It's one of the most complicated things to fix in dressage, okay? Because if you don't have that connection, you just can't move forward. So it's so, so, so important. So remember sideways, hands forward, follow the contact and use up and down transitions as much as you can. I hope this is helping getting that more real life backward and forward ability to be able to just ask questions and have it really answered and more conversationally, get a broader understanding. I really, really hope it's helping. Please guys, remember to subscribe. At the moment, about 50% of the people that watch aren't subscribed. So if you're liking what you're seeing and you're liking what we're watching, could you please press the subscribe button? The more we grow with our subscriptions, the more we're able to help you and the more really cool things we're able to do. We really wanna think big. We we really, really, really want to grow this into something that can help so many people.